extreme skiing. The new wave of top end skiing that pits man against mountain in an all terrain challenge. It's action and excitement. It's the new competitive venue of the 90s that takes free skiing to a level beyond anything you've ever seen before. This is Extreme Skiing Competition. Welcome to Crested Butte, Colorado for the first ever Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. Hello everyone, I'm Sandy Santusi and joining me today to bring you the play-by-play -play action is Rob Delorier, the head judge and an extreme skier himself. Rob, what kind of competition are we going to see today? What we're going to see today, really, Sandy, is all-terrain free skiing up here. Extreme skiing, taking the mountain to its limit. We're going to see a combination of everything you've ever seen before in skiing. Moguls, freestyle, we're going to see some great air up there and some racing turns. Everything these top end skiers have ever done in their career is going to be come out on this mountain today, and they're going to be using the whole mountain for everything it's worth. We're going to see some great action up there All today, right, Sandy. Great. And we've whittled down the competition the last two days in qualifiers from 70 competitors to 25 of the top extreme skiers. And Bart Lockhart, former Golande champion, will be joining us doing interviews. And Bart, you've had a chance to talk to some of these guys. What's the feeling up there? Well, Sandy, these guys today are looking at a little bit different terrain than they had yesterday. It was a little bit tight yesterday. They got a chance for some big air, but they didn't have a lot of opportunity to get really big air in a place where they could ski it out safely. Here we've got a wider field. We've got people that are going to be GS turning, uh, picking up a lot more speed than they did yesterday. And I look for some really big air up here today. Well, great. Air could be the big word here, but we're also going to see some great skiing. We'll be back with the action here at the Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships right here on Prime Network. The Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, the only beer with a taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Nothing beats a bud. And by Crested Butte Mountain Resort. Ski the extreme west. It's pretty extreme. You get at the top and you're scared for your life. I'd say that's pretty extreme. Obviously there were a batch of rocks in there, so that is extreme skiing. Just love to ski. Can't get enough of it. But uh, it's going to be serious tomorrow. When you fall, you die. You die, you die. Well, a little bit of extreme skier's humor there. Mike Shell, Crested Butte's own three pinner, is not doing exactly what the judges want to see, Rob. That's absolutely right. We do want to see aggressiveness. That's one of the six equally weighted categories, but that was a little out of hand. We also want to see nice form and technique. Whatever's appropriate for the hill and the skier, that's what we want to see. Then we're looking for fluidity of line. We want to see people flowing down the fall line nicely, and we want to see some air that Scott Harrington just got there for us, very important part of extreme skiing, and we want to see creativity in line, which you see here, a lot of creativity, he's using the whole hill, and overall, we want to see control. Yeah, and this is Scott Harrington, as we said, he's a veteran of the Bud Pro Mobile he was the number one qualifier in the second day of qualifications here on Staircase at Crested Butte. A great skier, they call him the Skyman, and I wonder why, Rob. <laughs> Look at the guy's just like a cat. It's amazing. You think he's off balance, his hand are behind, and boom, he pops some more air. He is the airman Harrington turning in a super day in day two. You know what? I can't tell who's having more fun, the spectators or the competitors, as we watch number three, Kristen Ulmer, who is the number one women's qualifier. She's got her work cut out against Kim Reichelm, the defending world champion from Valdez. That's right. Kristen Ulmer, a good friend of mine. I've done a lot of extreme skiing and filming work with her. She is an aggressive super skier. She's using the fall line. She's going down the hill, cutting some turns, catching some air. She's psyched for that competition with Kim Reichelm tomorrow. She's a real strong skier, no doubt about that. As we see Mr. Harrington, Greg Harrington, he's not related to Scotty, and he was number two in the qualifier, and he's really going down this steep 44-degree pitch using some creativity, Rob. That's right. The judges love the top section. We saw some air a bit ago there, and now we're seeing him use the whole hill back and forth. Greg's a freestyle coach of Squaw Valley, California, a competitive and strong skier. You know, once again, it's important to understand from this camera angle as we're watching now, John Biggers, Crested Butte Ski Patrol, come down staircase with a really unique line. The problem is here, the camera does not show the steepness, Rob. That's right. We're looking at a 44-degree pitch, and Johnny Biggers here is just dancing through the rocks. That is steep. 
Johnny's one of the most technical skiers that we're going to see in the competition. He's got a lot of racing background, beautiful lower body work, and he's just ripping it up. The judges love that creative line. Johnny Biggers watching him go down, and Bart Lockhart is in the finish line with the top three qualifiers. All right, John Biggers, Scott and Greg Harrington, brothers only in spirit. Guys, I heard you talking, Greg. You said something about a lot bigger air than expected off that top rise. What happened? Well, uh, Scott and I had been scouting out a different entry for the first run this morning, something different, something that the judges would, would take notice of. And he went first and got pretty good air and came in, thought I had the same speed and just went pretty high. I wasn't Jones. quite expecting it. <laughs> John came down in a minute and eight and Greg or uh, Scott had the fastest time of the day, a minute and five. You took a different route this time though. You came down skiers right. Last time you were on skiers left. How come you switched? Um, I thought that uh, taking a different line would be good because, um, you know, they want to see it mix it up. They want to see a different line. So right. uh, it was kind of a, almost a radical thing to do because that line over there is okay, but it's, I don't think it scores as well as the other side. Right. So, and I kind of got slow in there and stuff, but I crossed over and, you know, it turned out all right. And after two days of qualifying, let's take a look at the running order for the final competition. That's right, what we've done here is we've whittled the field from 72 down to 26 people. We put those 26 bibs in a bag, we drew them out, so it's a random start order, it's fair to everybody. Men and women all mixed together, getting psyched for a big day of competition in the finals coming up. And before we go to the head wall for the final competition, let's find out a little bit more about Crested Butte Mountain Resort. Sandy, this is an ideal skiers resort. I've skied the extremes all over North America and the world for films, and Crested Butte has done a super job opening new top end terrain. This season they added a new lift that accesses the terrain without any more hiking. They opened a brand new bowl, giving the mountain over 1,100 skiable acres and over 3,000 feet of vertical. But it's not all double black diamond skiing here at Crested Butte. This mountainside destination resort has maintained its family posture that it's famous for. It has super programs for adults and the kids. Now let's not forget the summertime here in the Rockies of Crested Butte, Colorado, the Fat Tire Bike Week, as well as the Wildflower Festival. Crested Butte, Colorado is a beautiful four-season resort. And we'll be back with more Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships right after this. And we're back at the Headwall in Crested Butte, Colorado for the first ever Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. And on the course is Kim Rykelm out of Crested Butte, Colorado. She is the defending World Women's Extreme Ski Champion, Rob. That's right. She had a super showing at Valdez last year in Alaska, and she's turning in a great run to the top. She has a long traverse going on here after some superb fall line skiing over the top with a little bit of air. But that's okay. She's coming over here, getting into that rock band. So that's fine. The judges don't mind her traverse as long as you're going into some tricky skiing that's unique part of the hill. That shows creativity in her line. We like this. She's skiing beautifully here, Sandy. She has a lot of racing background. She's really cutting up the head wall for us today. And the spectators seem to really enjoy her run, too. Defending world champion, extreme skier, Kim Rykel. Great gal. Strong finish for Kim there. That shows a lot of strength coming in with those turns at the end of the run. And up next at the top of the course is Lane Williams out of Salt Lake City. He skis also a lot. That's right. Look at how steep that pitch is. You, you know, he's, you can tell by the way his skis are there. It's a steep pitch. He's traversing over here, but he's getting above these rocks, and he's looking for some air here. He's working into the trickiest section of the course here for us. But he's got to be losing some points right here. There's a lot of hesitation as he gets into that air. Big Whoa, air. Some nice air. A smooth oh. takeoff. A tight, a tight form in the air. But his landing's a problem. The judges aren't going to like that. And you're right, Sandy. We don't like to see that hesitation. We want to see fluidity in that run. But that was some big air. And again, he's going across the traverse line there. But he did find some air. So that won't cost him too much there as that well. That won't cost him too much. Now, that traverse right there might cost him because there's no new falling. Let's look at that air again. Big, big air. Got back there on the landing. It's too bad because uh, if he could have landed that and skied away, he probably would have done a lot better than a 7.21. And let's go back up the top. Patrick McIntyre of Tahoe City, California, skis at Squaw. He's used to this terrain. Rob, he's found himself a nice line. It's a beautiful line he shows. And there's some nice air. 
Pat is a ski instructor at Squaw Valley. He spends a lot of time on the hill. A long traverse here. Oh, but some more air. And he sticks it in the fall line. That's beautiful. Let's take a look at that air again, Sandy. He really goes far. Look at he clears all those rocks and he stays in there, gets back up on his skis and... Uh, yeah. A great run by Patrick. Very strong, top to bottom. A couple of beautiful airs and a tricky line. And here's Justin Patnode from Dillon, Colorado. Another Bud Mogultor skier. He's almost uh, in the running for Rookie of the Year. <laughs> Big air off that rock up there. That's Justin. a nice air. Yeah, he is the Rookie of the Year on the Bud Pro Mogul Tour, and he's showing us his stuff here today. He's Some nice air. Quite a flamboyant skier. Placed third in Valdez at the World Extreme Championships last April. And uh, look at this air again. He's really getting some distance. A very flamboyant skier. Great guy to know. Yep, he stuck that. That was nice. Creative line at the bottom down by the trees. Some nice air. A beautiful run for Justin Patton. Now showing us his stuff. Spectators really like that kind of skiing, and we're going to see a lot more of that guy. Scott Harrington on course. Now this guy, man, we know all about him, don't we, Rob? We sure do. Our number one seed coming into the finals here, skiing some steep, catching some air for us. He's a phenomenal all-around skier. Another Bud Mogul Tour veteran's been skiing on that tour for the last couple of seasons, and he's a great guy. He's got his Mad Hatter bomber hat on. He's really going for it. <laughs> and he is going for it. And look at that air. The guy just cannot stay on the ground. He's all over. That traverse might hurt him a little bit there, but look at this air. His feet stay underneath him, wiggling all over and just sticking that landing. Unbelievable balance. You see, he started off back, but he got forward in the air. Unreal. And as the judges tally, let's go to Bart Lockhart with Scott in the finish. I, play, I mapped it out coming down that ridge. We're coming right down the center, actually. And uh, wanted to launch that one little cliff. Had a little trouble off it, but... Um, and then veer over and swing around and catch that other air. You know, I'm into air, so hopefully that'll do well for me. And indeed he is. And back up the top of the course, Dean Conway out of Olympic Valley, California. He skis at Squaw, and he's got himself a nice line, Rob. That's right. Here comes Dean down to the trickiest section of the course into the big air. Smooth hopping into it. Very oh clean God. off. Yes, and he sticks it. That was perfect air. Smooth in, smooth flight, smooth landing right down the fall line. And look how he's staying in that fall line. Good racing technique. You can tell this guy's bashed some gates. Look, look again at that jump. Look at that air. The way he hopped into it smoothly. No hesitation. The clean air and the perfect landing in the fall line. And he's just powering through the bottom of the course. This guy is strong. Not a bad bump skier. You ought to be on the Bud Mole Tour. <laughs> Dean Conway, a great phenomenal score. run. Here's Jeff Zell out of Teton Village in Wyoming. And here's a young skier, and he's got some good air off that top oh, rock. Beautiful in, uh, form off that rock. The way he tucked his knees up. That's spectacular form off some nice air. There's some more. Skis are underneath him. He's in the fall line. That traversal hurt him a little bit. But Unlike freestyle, good. we're not looking for helicopters and wild air here in the extremes, are we, Rob? We're not. We're looking for air just like this. He's clean off the takeoff, picking up his skis, and sticking that landing in the fall line, making turns. Jeff Sell with a great run, and the judges are going to like that one, I have a feeling, Rob. And uh, as we watch Scott Kennett grab some air, we'll give you the standings. After round one, it's Dean Conway, Justin Patnode in second, Scott Harrington in third, and Patrick McIntyre in fourth place. And in the highly contested women's division, Kim Reichhelm with a phenomenal run just barely clips Kristen Ulmer. And we'll be back with more Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships on Prime Network right after this. And welcome back to the headball for the Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships as we watch Mike Shell again try to land one on those three pins. And up top is Dean Conway, the leader after round one. And here comes Dean again, heading for that big air that he skied so smoothly last time. He's heading for a bigger line. Look at that air. Ooh, and he sticks it again. That this, was beautiful. This guy is unreal, Rob. This guy is a powerhouse. Look at him carving these big turns down here at high speed. I can't believe that air. Again, in that same slot off of that same rock, he lands it perfectly. What velocity as he comes into that landing. And look at him finish straight. He's strong, powerful. He is psyched with that one, and the crowds love it. One of the best scores of the day, 8.17, as Jeff Zell, currently in fifth place, comes into that same notch. Let's see. A little hesitation, not good. He's hesitating, not quite like Dean. Boy, he, this is big air, and he knows it. He's coming into it with a little bit of caution. Here he goes. Nice, nice. Yes, and he lands it. That was a beautiful flight for Jeff Zell. 
Once again, from that other camera angle, shows you exactly where we are on the head wall. Look how steep that is. Look at that. Beautiful. Finishing strong, tight, nice turns. Great run. He's psyched about that one. And here she is, Kristen Omer. Kristen Omer second, and she knows it. She's a competitive lady. I can tell you that, and, and I'm expecting some big things from her. She's skiing the fall line here out of the start. It is steep up there, Rob. Again, this camera angle does not show how steep it is. And look at that. There. Beautiful, and she sticks it. Big oh, wow. air. Kristen, I told you, I've seen her catch some big air. That was beautiful. That was huge air. She's back in the fall line, turning it. Look, look at, at that. that. Knees up, tight takeoff. Look at focusing on the landing and sticking it. She is a strong skier. A phenomenal run by Kristen Omer there. Very good run. She is incredible. Bart Lockhart is with her in the finish line. Kristen, you had to one better Kim on that, and you may have done it. That was some magnificent air. I knew I needed to do something like that. So I looked at it. It looked really, felt really comfortable. I said, yeah, I'm going for it. Yeah, you must be pumped. Yeah, felt good. And here at the top, Kim Rykalm again. Leader after the round one, she has got to do something great here, Rob. She's skiing the fall line for us, Sandy. She's skiing beautifully. She's a great skier, and I'm sure that she knows she has to come up with something big after the way the crowd roared for Kristen just a few minutes ago. Well, she looks very tight right in through here. Good technical skiing. A little bit of flaw there, but she's still skiing very tight. It's very smooth. I hope she's got some tricks in here. Her line hasn't been too, too exciting. I'm a little bit surprised. There's some air. Not too, not too good, but it's all right. She's a beautiful skier. Oh, oh, oh Kim. A rare fall by Kim. She got on her uphill ski and buried in a mole. It's flat light out there, Sandy. It's hard to see for these skiers. Well, let's take a look again at what happened here for Kim Rykow. And she's skiing okay right there. And it just looks like something grabbed her leg and pulled her down. That's too that bad. That is really unfortunate. That could cost her. The... That could really cost her because Kristen had a phenomenal run. Oh, that cost her. The judges hit her on that one. And we go back up to the top of the course, number 13, Patrick McIntyre. Looks like he's in that same line, Rob. That's right. He skied it beautifully last time, and I guess he feels comfortable with it. He's, again, making phenomenal technical turns. He's just a beautiful skier. Let's hope he's going to show us that air again, Sandy. Again, we got to remember how steep it is up in here. Oh, Yay. yeah, even bigger that time. Clear the rocks by a long ways. Going across again. Woo! <laughs> Unreal. Look at that line again. Look at that air. He really caught some time there. Yeah, Big he, air time. He popped out and clearing the rocks and skiing some beautiful GSers down here at the bottom. He is a strong, aggressive, great technical skier. And that's exactly what all these extreme skiers are. They've got to know exactly what they're doing all the time. Oh. Patrick McIntyre with a good run. The crowds love him. Back up top, another Bud Mogul Tour competitor. He's vying for Rookie of the Year on that tour is Justin Patino. He catches a little rock on that jump. A little rock, phenomenal balance. That is steep up there, Sandy, I can tell you. And he did a great job pulling it back together after catching so much ski on the rocks after the air there. <laughs> Real, Justin is a very flamboyant skier and he's just doing great job here. He's number three in the world from last year's event at Valdez, another big air. Unreal. Looking good. He's hanging on. He's got some speed down that pitch. Let's look at this air again. He pops it. Knees come up. Little cross. Nice form. A hip check to control speed. That won't cost him. That was a nice control move. A, a great run by Justin. The spectators are just going bananas over Justin Patnode's run. They're just loving all of this competition as we watch Scott Skyman Harrington currently in third place and he could move up a notch with this run. That was some phenomenal air. That's his signature air. Here he goes again for more. Oh, his feet were under him on that one. Nice balance recovery move in the air on that one, Sandy. This guy's unreal when he gets in the air. How does he do it? He, he, he takes off in the back seat and lands frontwards all the time. It's He's unreal. got that signature air, that stiffy air. I don't know if I like that too much, but it sure works for Scott. Look at that recovery air again. <laughs> he gets big air. He sucks up those knees and gets a few extra vertical. A great run. Let's look at his air again here. There's his signature move. Nobody else does it like that. Scott Skyman Harrington, another veteran of the Bud Pro Mogul Tour, competing on the extremes here on Headwall. Showing us his mogul technique here. He's just bumping down there. A nice run by Scott. The crowd sure liked that one. All right, Sandy, let's go back and take a look at one of the competitors who has some hesitation in the cliff band area. That just won't work. You need speed to clear those rocks. When we return, we'll have Bart Lockhart with our winner in the finish line. 
I'm with Dean Conway down at the bottom. What a performance. You launched off of that thing. What was going through your mind? Uh, just to clear all those rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I could hear the crowd rooting me, so it gave me a lot of adrenaline to finish that run. So I was getting a little tired. <laughs> hey, I'm really happy to be here today. I'll bring some root. Well, he's a happy camper, Rob, and let's go through the standings. Dean Conway in first, followed by Patrick McIntyre, Justin Patnode, and Scott Harrington. And in the women's division, Kristen Omer nips Kim Reichelm with that phenomenal air, and unfortunately, Kim had that fall the second run. And in fifth place, we have Jeff Zell, Garrett Bartlett in sixth, Scott Kennett, and Patrick Campbell rounding out the men's field. Angie Hornbrook in third for the women, and Barbara Peters, a couple of local gals. Unbelievable competition here in Crested Butte, Colorado for the first ever Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. Dean Conway, the guy, didn't even know he made it into the finals until late last night. Unbelievable performance. A incredible performance by Dean. He put everything together here today, gave us everything we wanted to see, put together two of the hottest runs we've seen in the last three days of competition, and we have seen some beauties. The guy just knew when to do it, and he did it for us today. The competitors all today were unbelievable. Exuberance plus in the finish line. Bart Lockhart, you were there with most of them. What was it like? You talk about stoked. I thought I was going to break my back when Dean Conway hugged me when I went up for the interview. I talked to Dean Monday in the elevator. It was late at night, and he said, dude, I'm going to win this event. I thought, who is this kid? We all know who this kid is now. He skied fantastically. And, of course, we can't forget the women. The women skied great today. They were powerful, and I think they're really looking forward to going up to Valdez. Well, that's right. And, of course, this is a preliminary event for the World Championships in Valdez, Alaska. And we will see you there on Prime Network. I'm Sandy Santusi for Rob Delorier and Bart Lockhart. Take care. The Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. And by Crested Butte Mountain Resort. Ski the extreme west. Accommodations provided by the Grand Butte Hotel, the official hotel of the Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships. For year-round vacation packages, call 1-800-642-4422. And by Continental Airlines. One airline can make a difference. Continental, the official airline of the Budweiser U.S. Extreme Skiing Championships.